the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have a great sin in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most serious fault. Therefore, I ask for the Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to be grateful to you, to the Lord our God. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
because each one heard them speaking in his own tongue. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of, how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Parigia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we were them, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Lord, 
you know, friend group in high school. He was a year ahead of me at college. He graduated from the same college. Uh, and so to be there, actually, um, one of the things that you do when you're getting ordained is you choose someone to invest you. Um, and it's a sign that, that uh, the priest has not received. He does, he does not take the priesthood on himself. He receives it from the church. Uh, and so another priest actually puts on the stole and the chasuble for you for the first time during the um, ordination rite. Uh, so my friend gave me the great honor of, of doing that for him. Uh, and so I can tell you that uh, today as we celebrate Pentecost, the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, uh, the faith, the integrity that I saw in the men being ordained today uh, was just a great reason for hope. Uh, I was so inspired by their witness. And what do we celebrate today? The Feast of Pentecost. Uh, and we have to always look back to the, the Jewish roots, our Jewish roots, as a Christian people. What is being fulfilled? Everything that our Lord is doing is always a fulfillment of something. It was celebrated, it was taught, um, it was proclaimed by the Jewish people. And so Pentecost is the same way. Uh, it's one of those things. So Pentecost meaning 50 days. It's 50 days after Passover. Uh, in English, we say it's the Feast of Weeks. Uh, and typically, if you look through the, the Jewish calendar of feasts, most of them seem to have sort of a twofold purpose. So there was the first purpose was some act of God. And then the second purpose was some act of thanksgiving um, for usually something having to do with agriculture. You know, so you give thanks for the grapes that grow, you give thanks for the wheat that grows, all of that kind of stuff. Well, the act of God that was given thanks for, uh, that was celebrated during the Feast of Weeks, was the giving of the Torah. The Torah meaning the law. And when I say law, you immediately think laws that we must follow. And, and I'm under, under obedience under the law that my freedom is restricted. That is not what was thought by the law. The law was the way to freedom. It was that thing that directed the Jewish people to living in right, right relationship with God. It was actually a revelation and a light to them given by the creator of the universe to show them what is possible. How human beings can live in peace with their creator and the blessings that come about through that possibility. And in addition with that giving of the law was also that first entering into the promised land. Uh, and so when they finally were get free from the desert, free from death, free from the dryness and the lack of water and sustenance and life-givingness that, that the desert is, and into the promised land where they were nourished, taken care of, fed, everything is okay now. So that's the act of God that's celebrated during this feast day. Uh, the, the agricultural portion of it uh, was the uh, first fruits of the grain harvest, the first fruits of the wheat, wheat harvest, and offering those first fruits back to God. And so the harvest has begun. The seeds that were planted, the seeds that fell to the ground and died, no longer remained a grain of wheat but they flourished into the plants that they were called to be. So if you think of the Passover, our Lord is the grain of wheat that fell to the ground and died on the cross. After his resurrection, then his ascension, then 10 days later, the harvest is going to begin, the harvest of the rest of the world. And is it just the Jewish world? No, it's the whole world, all people, as we see represented uh, in the reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There are people from every land, every nation, hearing the voice of Peter at the very beginning and birth of the church. And this is the beginning of the harvest of the world that we are called to be harvested in to the promised land and the kingdom of God. Okay, so that's what we're celebrating today. The Torah was the old law. Where was it written? Well, it's the first five books of the Bible. It was given to the Jewish people. It was written on scrolls. It was contained also. It was summed up in the Ten Commandments, written on stone, tablets of stone. Pentecost is the feast of the giving of the new law. And what is the new law? As it was prophesied 
uh, in the Old Testament, it is no longer going to be written on tablets of stone, but on the human hearts who receive it. This is what, let's say, Thomas Aquinas, when he was the great angelic doctor of the church and one of the greatest theologians the church has seen. What did he say? He was looking at the scriptures. He was looking at the fathers of the church. He was saying, what is the new law? What is it consistent? Where is it written? Where can I find it? And he comes to the conclusion that the new law is nothing more nor less than the presence of the Holy Spirit in the heart of a Christian believer. That is the new law. That means that what it guides us to our ultimate fulfillment is no longer external to us. It is no longer a commandment that we read and then have to try and follow. It's a commandment that is placed into our heart. It is a desire that is given to us so that when we act, we are acting from our freedom and not from obligation. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit in the heart of a believer. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're anything like a normal human being, or a normal Christian, perhaps, you're somewhere in between the old law and the new law. Your heart is somewhere in between that. You see the old law. You see the laws of Christ. You see the, the teachings of the church. You see all of these things, and perhaps you know some inkling about your desire to be in relationship with the creator of the universe. You know some inkling about how your, your ultimate fulfillment is in heaven. Nothing on this earth can truly fulfill you. And yet you also know that you've tried. You've tried various things. You've tried taking control of your life. You've tried um, you know, finding fulfillment in this and that thing. Um, but you know that, that ultimately it's a little bit trying. So you've, you're trying out of obligation, perhaps, uh, to come to some greater realization of, of where is my relationship with the creator of the universe. How can he teach me to love more, to love better? Uh, but maybe it hasn't yet been that spring of interior freedom which the Holy Spirit gives to us. Part of that is because we haven't come to fully know the Holy Spirit yet. If you think about it, uh, the Holy Spirit might be the least known person of the Holy Trinity. And who can blame us, Lord? I don't think you can blame us for this. Um, because, because of his name, it's his Holy Spirit. Uh, what is, you know, the, the, the first person of the Trinity is the Father. We know a little bit of what uh, that's like. We, we, see our, we see our Father. Uh, we see human fathers. We're like, oh, okay, so something about human fathers is just a little bit like God the Father. It's analogous. It's not exactly like, just a little bit like. So we, can, we know. We have a concept in our mind that we can begin to go off of, even though we know that God's fatherhood is so much more mysterious, uh, so much greater. Then we have the second person of the Trinity, the Son. Oh, we also have a concept for that. I know what it's like being a son. In some way, my sonship is just a tiny bit like God the Son. Right? Even though his sonship is so much greater, so much more mysterious, and is actually the, the paradigm of all sonship. Um, there's something, there's a concept we have in our mind. But what about the Holy Spirit? What concept of spirit do we have? The Holy Spirit, that's not a relationship. The Father is a relationship. The Son is a relationship. The Holy Spirit, we don't know what that relationship is like. How are we supposed to know that? Part of the reason we don't know the Holy Spirit is because he's actually the closest to us. The Holy Spirit does the same thing in our lives his, his action in our life is based off of his action in the Blessed Trinity. Now, Trinitarian theology, so don't get too worried here, but everything that the Father is, is the Son's. He has given it to the Son. There is nothing that God the Father is that he has not given to the Son. There is nothing that the Son is that he has not received from the Father. That's who the Son is, everything he has received from the Father. And he has given everything that he is back to the Father. And this union is what the Holy Spirit proceeds from. We can say that the Holy Spirit is the togetherness of the Father and the Son. It's the being witness of the Father and the Son. And what the Holy Spirit does in the Trinity, he then is doing to each one of us. 
And that's why it's called the new law. Because what's the whole purpose of the law? To unite a human soul, a human heart and soul, to the creator of the universe, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our souls, his sole object is to bring us into relationship and knowledge of the Father and the Son. That's all he does. He enters into our soul and brings us into relationship with the Father and the Son. Now you might be thinking, wow, that sounds great. How do I do that or know what's <coughs> happening? Or, or what, okay, what do I do now? If you have ever experienced yourself as a beloved son or a beloved daughter of God the Father, you have known the Holy Spirit because he brought that about in you. If you have ever come to some inkling of who the Son is, or if your mind has even glimpsed for a moment the love that God the Son has when he died on the cross for us, you know the Holy Spirit because he brought that about in you. When you have looked at another human being and you have realized that you desire their true good, you have known the Holy Spirit because he has brought that about to you. When you decided to go to Mass at 5 o'clock on June 4th, you know the Holy Spirit because he brought that about to you. One of the reasons why it's hard for us to know the Holy Spirit is because he's so close to us. When we are in a state of grace, his presence is one with our souls. And so we can't really see him without finding some mirror. And what mirror do we find to know the presence of the Holy Spirit? Our relationship with God the Father and the Son. When we, when we see our we know the Holy Spirit's presence, we know his action by the way we relate to God the Father and God the Son. That's how we know the Holy Spirit. That's it. So if you know God the Father and God the Son, you know that the Holy Spirit has been in you. And he's brought that about in you. Today we ask for a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. One of the things that we read in the sequence, uh, this is a beautiful line, bend the stubborn heart and this is exactly what the Holy Spirit does. God is the only one who can move the human will. He's the only one that can change it from going down a wrong path to the right path. He's the only one that can bend it back to union with its creator. Which means if you find yourself in a state of not quite right relationship with God the Father, know that you have the Holy Spirit who is able to bring that relationship back able to bend your will back to God the Father. It's exactly what happens in the sacrament of confession. It's exactly what happens every time you make an act of faith in God the Father or God the Son. It's always the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, on this feast of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, when you first gave us the new law, the way back to you in union with you, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit into our minds and our hearts. Bend our will back to you. Let nothing that is just of ourselves remain. Let everything that we are come from the Holy Spirit so that we might know you and your Son whom you have sent. Amen. I believe in one God. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, trust in your providential care for us. We offer you our prayers and petitions. For all our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Francis Bishop Burdridge, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of the construction workers and the success of our building project, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish, seminarians, Deacon Tony Bennett, Deacon Mike Nugent, James Joseph, and Gabriel Godet, and for Ann Whalen and Carolyn Jones, postulants at the Nashville Dominicans, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For the eight men who were the ordained priests for the diocese this Saturday, that they will be faithful and generous servants, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jean Oliver, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know our deepest needs. We ask you to answer these prayers if they be in accord with your most holy will. For we ask it in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the cause of the Holy Church. And we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of the sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirits. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. And our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those who made your adopted children by uniting them to your holy begotten. This same spirit as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic chords sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are free. Please, O God, we pray, 
and bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised in heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
the health of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. St. Michael the Oh,